Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there are, is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, woman, I put the ways of childhood behind me, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Oh Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Thank you, Teresa, for volunteering to read the scripture. <laughs> Luckily, it's my favorite. She did so well, didn't she? Yes. The uh, letter of, uh, of Paul to the Corinthians is so well known in, uh, in and outside the church. It's frequently read in uh, weddings and it's been occasions like that. Because it is a classic statement about the sovereignty of love. Earlier this month, uh, I had, we had a discussion group at the church. We're continuing with the study of the New, New Testament that Bonnie is doing um, this next Thursday. But we had a discussion group at the church, and uh, a number of you uh, were in that group with me, where we discussed and studied uh, the book by Henry Nouwen called Life of the Beloved. Nouwen's premise, I'm gonna, for those of you that work in, in that group, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna give you a little summary of part of it anyhow. Nouwen's premise is that life parallels the sacrament of communion and the place of bread in the sacrament of communion. In that we also, in, our, in life, are chosen, blessed, broken, and given. According to Nolan, our brokenness as human beings can be physical, and certainly is experienced in death. But is also in inner brokenness, what he calls a brokenness of the heart. That, that happens to us along the road of life. He reflects, I think, I see the immense pain in broken relationships between husbands and wives parents and children, lovers, friends, colleagues, feelings of being rejected, ignored, despised, and left alone. Clearly, this thing called life, the human condition, if you will, 
includes being vulnerable, being hurtful, and in Henry Nowell's terms, being broken. But is that the end of the story? You all know from my prayer request a few weeks back that my German Shepherd dog, Maxwell, has only a few weeks or at best a few months left to live. At 12 and a half years, that's full life for that breed. He has disabling arthritis and now has a breathing problem called laryngeal paralysis, which literally means that his larynx that opens and closes to the lungs is paralyzed. And he just does not get the air to breathe that he needs. It's taking a walk for a short distance, uh, makes me gasp for breath. Yesterday, I, I used to walk in two miles, a long walk. I'd take over to Publix and to their parking lot and so on. We were a familiar fixture. But now it's been a, a limited neighborhood walk down two blocks and then back. And yesterday morning, it was just down to the corner. I got halfway to the corner and he stopped. He's having that much trouble breathing. All that Teresa and I can do is to keep him as comfortable as possible, make sure he doesn't suffer, and continue to love him. Now, all this grief could have been avoided very easily. My first German shepherd was, uh, once you start with a certain breed of dog, you tend to stay with them, you know. <laughs> My first uh, German shepherd was Ruby, and she was with me when I moved to the Keys 20 years ago. She was with me for over 12 years, and I lost her, and my heart was so broken. Uh, I'd gone through many changes and losses in my life, and she'd been there as my constant companion. So a lot got invested, I think, there. I resolved that I would never get a dog again. <laughs> I won't go through that anymore. But as the years went by after Ruby died, I realized something else. By living alone and protecting myself from the pain of loss, I was hurting myself in a different way. I was depriving myself of love and companionship. I was safe all right from the hurt of loss, but I was also forfeiting the rewards of love and closeness. Has anybody else here ever done that? Yeah. So after five years of living alone, I decided to take another chance and I screwed up my courage, and I decided to risk loving again, and I adopted, uh, from animal control, I adopted Maxwell. He, his name was Max, that's what they called him there, but I figured he needed a better name than that. And I, he looked very smart to me, and I remember the old show, Maxwell Smart. I figured I'd call you Maxwell, because you're obviously a very smart dog. And I adopted Maxwell. He was full grown. And together we've had eight glorious years of joy and happiness. Now I tell you this story, I give you this personal note, because, my friends, I'm convinced that this is what life is all about. Life is about love as Teresa showed in the reading this morning from Paul. It's about becoming close, forming attachments, and making commitments. It's also about taking risks and accepting loss. It's also about being broken and being hurt. There are two sides. These are two sides to the same coin. One side is love 
the closeness, the other side is vulnerability and hurt. You can't have the first without having the other. It's a package deal. And just as our call as human beings is to love, part of our call is also to become vulnerable. But we think of God as being all powerful. But I want to suggest that God knows about vulnerability. That shouldn't surprise us because he knows about all things. He, God himself, if you think of it, became vulnerable when he gave us free will. The power of choice. Freedom to choose. Interesting to think about. And for me, this is something in my own theology. Jesus is God become vulnerable. God became man and experienced the pain of loneliness, misunderstanding, criticism, rejection, betrayal, torture, and death. into this because he loves us and he wanted to understand us better. But of course we still don't like the idea of being vulnerable and being hurt. And as in my story about Ruby and Maxwell, our human tendency is to try to avoid pain whenever possible. To rise above life and God. A self-centered attempt to be in control and to exempt ourselves from being hurt. Sometimes we try to compensate for pain and suffering, to minimize it. Well, we say, I'm never going to go through that again. I know what I'll do. I won't get involved. I won't let anybody enter my heart so fully again. I won't care so much. I'm not going to risk loving again. Then I can't be hurt. That's my way of beating the system, we say to ourselves. I guess we've all done that. A very important concept, I think, in uh, mental health and psychotherapy that I've studied in conjunction with my postgraduate courses is what psychologists refer to, and you've heard the term, but I, I've never understood it fully before. Psychologists refer to it as transference. And in addition to my study, Teresa and I have attended seminars at Baptist Hospital. Um, in Miami, and uh, one of them was on transference. The idea of the transference is that negative experiences, often from childhood, predispose us to not trusting others. Well, it could be different categories, men, women's, parental figures, authority figures, whatever we were bruised by in the past we tend to fall into a predisposition not to trust. So in life, when we meet these types of people in situations, we are predisposed to not trusting them. And we avoid them. We will not let ourselves get close. We will not risk love and involvement. And Scott Peck writes in his book, The Road Less Traveled, that we talked about a little bit in the discussion group too. He says this about it. He says, transference is that set of ways of perceiving and responding to the world which is sometimes developed in childhood. Inappropriate, it's appropriate there and even ensures survival sometimes. But then it's inappropriately transferred to our adult environment when we don't need it. 
He concludes, the problem of transference is not simply a problem between psychotherapists and their patients. It's a problem between parents and children, husbands and wives, employers and employees, and between friends. I guess the idea is carrying the baggage from the past, right? Let me illustrate. In the case of Ruby, I carried and I transferred the pain of grief and loss and my fear of being hurt again so I would not consider committing and loving another pet for over five years until I finally adopted Maxwell. That was transference. Those five years, I was protected and exempted from being hurt, but at what expense? The expense of depriving myself, and I became impoverished, and my emotional life was diminished. I spent a lot of time watching CNN. <laughs> I'm strongly convinced that fear and the transference of negative experience and relationships from the past into the present is one of the greatest enemies to our living, loving, and happy lives. Is hurt or grief really so terrible? Is it not what every great and courageous soul who ever lived has experienced? Sometimes I think we underestimate human resilience and our capacity for growth. I think we forget the words from the musical about Don Quixote called The Man of La Mancha. Has anybody seen that? Mm -hmm. Wonderful musical. When El Gallo, the Don Quixote figures, sings, without a hurt, the heart is hollow. Khalil Gibran, the Lebanese writer, said the deeper sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. We need to have the strength, my friends, to take yet another chance with life. We need to have discernment and we need to have courage if we are to live and love. Karl Barth, Protestant theologian, said, courage is fear that has said its prayers. <laughs> courage is fear that has said its prayers. My friends, we need to say our prayers. And we need to pray for the daring to live, to live fully and without fear, and to give ourselves to the uncertainty and the vulnerability of life, to enter into relationship and caring with each other, and not when we come to die, as Thoreau said, discover that we have not lived. We can promise just for today to live fully and to love with reckless abandon. Robert Frost wrote in his poem, Virtues, it's when I'm weary of considerations and life is too much like a pathless wood where your face burns and tickles from the cobwebs broken across it and one eye is weeping from a twig's having lashed across it open. I'd like to get away from Earth a while and then come back to it and begin over. May no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what I wish and snatched me away not to return. Earth, the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to go better. Amen.
we come to the part of our service for sharing of joys and concerns. And uh, if you have someone that you'd like to have uh, prayed for, will you let us know and we will be glad to do that. And we've got the second microphone we can pass around there too. Maybe Peter can help you with that. pray that our church could have some children in it. Because we've gone through different phases. When I first came to this church, we had one child. Then we had so many children. I would just love to pray that that we could have more children again. It's really important, I think. Thank you. Angie. I don't usually choose to speak publicly, but I wanted to share that um, Beatrice's goat came to our church many years ago, well, several years ago, and we were blessed to have three of the staff members from Northfield, Mount Herman, as members of our church. The doctor, or a doctor, who was a pediatrician, um, the guidance counselor, and an English teacher. Our church is in Guilford, New Hampshire, and the old Mount Herman is in Massachusetts. Thank you, and it's good to have both of you with us worshiping. Um, I want to make sure that Patty Waller got on our uh, prayer list, and, um, she had surgery uh, unexpectedly earlier this week. I don't know if she's returned home or not, but um, so let's put her on the prayer list. I'm sorry, who was it again? Abby Lawler. Yes, thank you. We have Dave Roberts, uh, of course, our, our, who's going to provide the music today, uh, who's in the hospital. We'll pray for him. <coughs> Any others, please? talked about my parents and getting them out of the nursing home, I felt like I did not say it very well. And Bonnie seemed a little upset by it. And my thought on the whole situation is, is they can take care of themselves right now. Shouldn't they live in their own home with their own pets while they still can? I mean, they are going to die eventually or have to be put in a nursing home. Now wasn't the time. I didn't mean like I left them and deserted them on their own. And that's the way it came out last week. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to say that, explain myself. Thank you. Thank you. We won't let it come out that way. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? Say a prayer for my brother. Um, he's had um, more. Um, he's going to need more back surgery. He's in a lot of pain, and he has trouble moving around right now. What's his name, Judy? Billy. If there are no other requests, uh, let's go in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day and for the beauty of it and your presence here with us, for all the gifts and all the wonders that we have in life, especially the wonder of each other. We thank you for our, our, our wonderful pastor, Bonnie Frost, and her husband Richard and who are away this week and we pray for them in Georgia. Um, that they don't work too hard and that they are able to have a good time with Bonnie's daughter and family there and the animals that they see there and for safe travel for them to return to us. We 
pray for Dave Roberts, who so unexpectedly uh, went into the Baptist Hospital with his heart problems last week. We pray for healing for him. We pray for your presence with him there this morning. For him to know that all is well here and all can be well with his soul. We pray for Patty Moyer, the hernia operation that she had this past week. Pray for healing for that. We pray for children all over the world who are the hope of tomorrow. And for children for our church. We pray for Judy's brother Billy, who's in so much pain. We pray for your healing touch upon him. We pray for Stella and for her mother and father and for her own recovery from medical issues that she has in her hand and for peace for her. We thank you for the gifts that we had this morning from our choir and from Peter who's done such a beautiful job glorifying you. All these things we lift up to you and so many more that are unspoken in our own hearts. Amen. Now let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the time is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now receive our offering, remembering it's not only what we have, but what we give that makes us truly what we are.
uh, read together the commission. Go into the world and return God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit. bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore.